Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma mubarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmadahu and Estain, who must tell Firuhu. When I would be lahim in Shururi and Fusna, men say at Yamalina. Maya de Hilla, who fella mudilla, who may you drill to fella adiella. Washadula, Ilaha in the law, the Hula Shrikala, Washadu and the Mohammedan Abdu or Sulu, some of Allah and Ava Salam. All praises due to Allah, from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is Allah's true servant, messenger. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yusir li amri wa hlul uqtu min lisani yafqahu qawli Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta la'alim al-hakim I pray that may Allah open my chest make easy for me this task and loosen the knots of my tongue that this these words may be understood and glory be to you Allah glory be to you alone that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us verily it is you who is the all-knowing the all-wise again assalamu alaikum to uh, everybody Juma Wadik to you all uh, as we begin this uh, this new month and uh, inshallah with the blessings that come with it there so our topic today that we've be talking about is on the aspect of prophetic leadership and leadership we may think is something that is only a uh in, in seen in, in a way of a rank or in, in, a, in a title or anything like that but leadership is something that is a value leadership is not something that uh, we can just you know uh, simplify to just something that is uh, or quantify in a sense like what is a leader it's like you know the person who has uh, this type of a rank or as someone who's in a, this type of level uh, of authority but what we need to differentiate is authority versus leadership that uh, people have the, as the the potential to where everybody in a sense uh, can become a leader in different ways uh, and in different spaces even if they may be at a bottom level of an organization or structure or whatever it may be but everybody has the capability to be a leader authority may be given you know or, or earned in different ways um but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh every leader uh has an authority that every leader may not not have an authority space and and what we want to think about in a sense is what is the value of leadership um because leadership is something that each and every one of us exhibits and can exhibit in any of the spaces in which we function whether it's in our homes or whether it's in uh, our workplaces or any other space that uh, we are a part of, we have the potential to be leaders. And we walk in the footsteps of a tradition uh, that uh, encourages us, that that uh, invites us to take after the example of uh, prophetic leadership, take after the example, uh, the best example of those who came before us who were uh, God's emissaries. Uh, and in our tradition, in the Islamic tradition, uh, we're blessed especially with the example and the role model of the Prophet Sallallahu and thinking about what does good leadership, what does prophetic leadership, what does not only it consist of, but what does that leadership then, uh, what is the effect of it? What what effect does it have on the people around, the folks who are connected to the leaders? And thinking about that, uh, having somebody in the sense that having a uh, a good leader in, in, in a way, and we'll see the analogy to the prophetic leadership, but having a good leader essentially fosters that trust, that cooperation, that uh, safety is then uh, something that is felt with this leader or uh, the inspiration to become a better version of yourself, to do better. Um, you see, you know, sacrificing oneself in the sense of uh, being able to lead by example and, and so many of these different things that come up uh, that are not only effective for leadership uh, within any organization or any space, but especially within all aspects of our uh, of our domains in which we in which we operate. And thinking about this 
how does it relate to the prophetic aspect? So I came across the work of a management theorist who was discussing optimal leadership in the context largely of work environments and what is the effect of having a good leader or a great leader uh, in, in, in terms of what they do, but also the effects that they can have. And it's very fascinating to me to think about many of the things in which this person was lifting up, which was for the purpose often of creating a healthy workspace or creating a positive work environment or creating a great uh, a, a space for where our workers could also be able to develop and be able to grow, to think about what parallels and how many parallels there actually were to the model of leadership left by our Prophet Sallallahu as well as the prophets who had walked before him and the people who were uh, around them who were the forerunners of faith. And this person had lifted up that, you know, great leaders, whether and using the example of parents, but again, when, when we think about leaders, I don't want us to just think about CEOs or people who are the bosses of organizations or at the top or people who are in levels of authority, but great leaders, because again, leaders and leadership is something that can be exhibited by people at whatever strata of any organization, any unit, any space or whatnot. Um, it's not dependent on a, a title or a rank, but great leaders are those who, one, provide people opportunity, they help educate people, they discipline when necessary, providing those guidances, uh, the guidance that's given, they help build the, the their, their constituents, their followers' self-confidence, they give the opportunity to try and fail, and ultimately, they help make and cultivate a sense, a of security, but they put um, they, they put people in a sense as a priority before themselves. They uh, you know they they sacrifice lead lead by this model of uh, putting themselves before uh, other people in a sense, and 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 not in the way of like oh I'm gonna you know it's gonna be me before anybody else. I can't I have to do this, and and then the rest of y'all can benefit. No, rather being able to take the dive when needed to, but also in the case where uh, they may need to be the last person to be served, they may need to be the last person to get a benefit, they put their people first in that aspect. And so when we think about these uh, these things which cultivate in, in a way uh, a healthy work environment, a healthy workspace, or uh, just in, in a healthy functioning organization, we think about the example that our son left us, that very practically when we think about wherever we might be working, wherever we might be serving, wherever we might be existing, whether it's in our families or whether it's in our homes or in school or in our workplace, that each of us has the opportunity to and should aspire to uh, be a leader in different ways. We all have different ways in which we can be a leader. It doesn't require us to be on the podium and giving a speech or be the loudest person in the room, but leadership exhibits itself in different ways. And so each of us has the opportunity to be and to grow into that leadership role and to walk in that path of uh, the Prophet as, as, as we, we aspire to uh, walk that path. But thinking about, we come from a tradition where the prayers that are uttered by those who came before us uh, asked for us to become the, uh, uh, the, the leaders of the righteous, to become imams amongst uh, those who are righteous and, and, and helping us be people of leadership. Again, not, not necessarily just in one particular context, but uh, in various ways to cultivate that aspect of not just being followers, but being leaders in different regards. So first and foremost, just to think about very simply in the life of our Prophet Sallallahu where we may have seen each of these things. When we see the first thing that was mentioned by the stereos of the great leaders are people who provide people with opportunities. Um, they open up the doors. They, they, they don't just reserve something for themselves. They don't just, uh, you know, sit back and just delegate to people or just give orders left and right, they themselves create opportunities for those people to subsequently advance. And we see this in the life of the Prophet somewhere in various instances, in various times uh, during his life and during the mission of Islam, he would give different people different roles and different opportunities, whether it's leading uh, a particular caravan or whether it's uh, being in charge of a particular space or whether it is doing one thing or another, but not just so that people are continuously associating that everything is being done just by the prophet, but being able to see the leaders amongst themselves. One example we'll give is that you see 
that uh, and actually in, in the context of the person, the people who uh, the Prophet had put to the front were not always just people who, who looked like him or the people who were just of the majority. So it wasn't just like nepotism, or something that you would see in many of our societies that feels very uh, oligarchic or feels like it's a very closed system that only a certain level of people or a certain group of people uh, are able to access that space of authority or able to be seen as leaders. Instead, you see when the Prophet provided people with opportunity, you see how, uh, for example, in the case of uh, Bilal Radulaw Anhu, that he, uh, being somebody who was considered in that society of no status, was given a space and given a position to be the voice of the community, to be the person who would call to the prayer, to be that individual who's in that space. You see uh, the blind man, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, uh, that uh, a person whom uh, was not able to even see, had, had a physical disability, yet would be somebody who would be left in charge of Medina, the city of Medina, when the Prophet Sallallahu and his community or his uh, followers would have to go engage in battle or have to leave the city for some time for uh, different affairs, that he would put this person in charge, um, even if he may lack uh, a, a, a particular ability, that he's providing opportunities for people in different ways and thinking about not just the, the aspect of you know sharing the, the wealth that's there, sharing the opportunity, but he's providing people those opportunities who didn't have the opportunities before. So when we think about for ourselves that when we are leading and being trying to be leaders in our environments, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools and whatnot, are we people who are providing opportunities for others and particularly for those who have not had that opportunity before or for those with whom that opportunity has been withheld. So it's important for us to think about that. It's easy for us to think that we can just take on all of these different things or afford this or feel like we have to hold on to something for power or for control. But true power and true control is being able to uh, not necessarily feel like we have to, we're, we're insecure about letting go of something, but to be able to uh, work and alongside with these other folks and to be able to provide those opportunities to be powerful in that we are creators of opportunities, not withholders of them. In terms of education, the Prophet Sallallahu was someone who, it's, 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 it's not uh, a, a disputable thing to see how he helped educate his community, how um, he prioritized them learning and he prioritized them growing um, and teaching them not just their deen and teaching them their religion, but teaching them how to be better holistic human beings that it's reported in the hadith of Prophet some would say that you know i i've not been sent except to perfect noble character or to perfect good character that he came with this instruction he came with the example to show them how to pray to show them how to be able to excel in their faith but he also showed them how to excel in their humanity and 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 help to educate his people most first and foremost by leading by example um, by doing that uh, which he would teach to other people, that he wouldn't do something or he wouldn't say something or whatnot and not do it himself, that he would lead by example in that case. And, and this education was holistic. You see within the Hadith, within uh, the lifetime of the Prophet so he wasn't just a teacher of fiqh. He wasn't just a instructor just in Islamic sciences. He was uh, someone who was a holistic educator in terms of giving an example for people uh, in terms of how they can conduct themselves in different situations. Um, you see him teaching people uh, emotional uh, health. You see him teaching like, emotional intelligence, different things like that. And so good leaders in that space or great leaders are those who don't just keep their people and keep themselves at a static level or just keep them at a plateaued level, but continue to help not just educate themselves, but continue to help educate their uh, constituents, their followers, the people around them, um, because as we know, you know, a, a rising tide lifts all boats. And, and for the Prophet some we see a lot of times as, as uh, emphasizes in society that knowledge is power, that education is key, and thinking about and in, in how the Prophet modeled that, not just in a curriculum sense, not just in an instructional sense, not just in the religious sense, but also in a holistic sense. And so we think about that in our context, that when we are helping our different systems and being leaders in our different systems, educating people may look differently. It doesn't have to just be in a school book, it doesn't have to just be according to a curriculum, but helping people learn, helping people maybe dispel certain stereotypes or misconceptions, helping educate people. For example, this past uh, year, 
there's probably been a lot of education that's been needed and maybe being done around uh, the suffering that is going on in the world. Many people don't know about the uh, the 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 uh, plight of the Palestinian people and the history of that time and 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 the historical dimensions um, of what has of what they've been going through. And, and it's been an opportunity to help educate folks in that aspect. But the way that that's educated is being done differently. Um, first and foremost, through how we conduct ourselves, how we uh, are engaged, but also then being able to open different doors and thinking about how the Prophet Sallallahu was someone who would uh, educate uh, in that space as well. Discipline when necessary, guidance when, when necessary. The Prophet was uh, was somebody who, you know, led a community, but also was was able to kind of rein in that when some someone in that community exceeded a bound, to be able to make it an example that uh, that for the entire community, this would not be an okay thing, that this was something that helped keep the boundaries that are there, just as a shepherd tends to a flock. And if a sheep goes astray, that that shepherd doesn't just go and, you know, start attacking the sheep, start hitting the sheep, but the shepherd mindfully brings that 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 sheep back uh, to the rest of the flock. And thinking about, in so many instances, the Prophet Sallallahu ministry, which lasted 23 years, involved many incidences in which uh, it, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're walking alongside this uh, this flock that is learning about the religion that is that is coming out of a space of jahiliyyah, um, that you have uh, this this discipline that is when necessary, but in a way that is rooted in mercy, in a, in a way that's rooted in compassion, in a way that's rooted in the understanding of where people are coming from. There's an incident in the life of the Prophet where one of the companions had, uh, derog in a derogatory way, had addressed Bilal and very harshly and had called him uh, the son of a black woman, and and as a means of insulting him, and the Prophet heard this, uh, and and was was you know disappointed in what that companion said, and said that you still have a bit of jahiliya, and you still have a bit of that pre-Islamic ignorance in you. It seems, um, giving the indication that this isn't this isn't something that we 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 should keep. Uh, this is something that uh, is not uh, uh, appropriate for a Muslim to have, and that companion had had felt that. At that moment, he had transgressed a bound, and he had uh, sought forgiveness from Bilal for um, his transgression in that way. But thinking about the Prophet was not just here just to provide a static space where everybody just felt welcome and brought everything as they were, as they were, without changing who they were. But he brought something that people were aspired to change to, inspired to change by, uh, but also knowing that there are certain rules to the road and there's certain ways that we can drive on this road. There's certain speed limits that we can drive at, but there's certain things that would be excesses and, and being able to be somebody to help foster a space where uh, discipline was part of that um, and where guidance was part of that. Uh, it doesn't, again, you know, he, he, he was not somebody that was uh, known to abuse his companions or physically harm them or do any of those aspects there. Um, so it should encourage us that in a society where people may resort to different means, uh, corporal punishment or other things like that, to to think about discipline, thinking about what does discipline look like um, from the prophetic standpoint, where we model uh, what 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 we would like to lead with, but also how we discipline, how we rehabilitate, how we help correct, does not need to just be punitive. It can be in different ways, but being able to be people to help set those guide markers, to help be able to hold the marker for what's right, what's wrong. Uh, Prophet uh, in the same context, that uh, great leaders help build people's self-confidence. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about how they provide people with their opportunity, but they give them the opportunity to try and fail. Uh, and we see this time and time again in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu where he gives opportunities to his different companions to lead, to be able to go and uh, you know, take on certain initiatives or whatever it may be, and you see, sometimes they'll fail, sometimes they'll succeed, but they wouldn't have known unless they would have been able to be given that uh, opportunity in the first place. And thinking about that, it's very easy for us to become preoccupied if we're in charge of an organization or we've been assigned a project or we're at the head of something that we feel like if we don't do it, it's going to fail, or if we don't do something, it will fail, so on and so forth. And and failure is something we can't accept. Rather reevaluating how we operate in 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 a light uh, in light of the Prophet's example and in light of healthy leadership model example that sometimes it's all right to let something fail because it's a better lesson that's learned to then uh, see from how we may have failed 
to then improve going forward. So thinking about when we give people the opportunity to try and to fail, uh, it's it's not it's a, it's a it may be a reflection more so it's not a reflection on us in terms of the the failure that happens and now we feel like the, these dynamics are coming at play where uh, the failure is indicative of us. It's it's a failure on their part um, and we need to fix that or whatnot. It's not about reputation. Rather being able to think about um, how being able to collectively learn from that experience, how being able to rally together from that space, make it a teaching moment rather than a failing moment uh, has an opportunity for us to all uh, be able to be lifted up by it, whether in the space of leadership, but also for those who are in 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 uh in following the leader that's there and so thinking about our prophet Sallam is leading a very eclectic and diverse community there will be opportunities to try there will be opportunities to fail uh but in each of those there is a lesson that is being given and then thinking about what the prophet Sallam's style of leadership what this style of prophetic leadership did it helped people make uh help help uh, make people feel secure People make them help make them feel safe. Uh, there was trust and cooperation that was cultivated. You saw a mindset in which the people were ready to sacrifice their own blood, sweat, and tears for the Prophet's vision, for the vision of Islam very early on. You know, even when he was uh, the, the entire society was at odds with him. But his style of leadership, his styles to uh to be able to put himself first uh in, in a way of if something, some hazard would come about to put himself first, to sacrifice, uh, you know, himself before the rest of the people, but also to then prioritize uh, his people uh, in different times and needs so that they might be able to be gained, so that they may be able to gain, so that they might be able to uh, succeed and be successful. You see that people were drawn to this personality. People were drawn to this style because it, it was rooted in cooperation and rooted in trust they didn't get paid for this they didn't get a monetary compensation for any of these things they didn't become worldly rich in that in the especially in those uh, very uh you know volatile years in the beginning where they were a very persecuted minority but you see them believe and not just what the process of his vision was and what the message was but they believe because of the style of that leadership um you have discussed in the Shama'il of Tirmidhi of how the Prophet gatherings would be. That when he would come into a space, he wasn't like the king uh, in a room where you knew where his throne was and everybody gathers around that. He would take a seat in his gatherings with people wherever there might be an open spot. He would live in that space. He would be in that space and treat everybody and as if they would be the most valuable, they would be the most, um, you know, uh, the most kind of valuable person to them uh, or the most person who mattered to him the most uh, in those situations and they would leave feeling like oh my gosh like you know i'm, I'm really the prophet's son's favorite because of the attention that he would give to people and the quality in which he would he would give them in that sense but cultivating that time and space uh that he wouldn't just uh think about uh oh how far have you learned your salat right now how far have you gotten here how far have you gotten here he would also know about their affairs and and be able to be mindful of who they are uh, how their families are doing, how their pets are doing, all of these different things um, that he, he 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 would put his people before himself in in terms of his his uh, his his needs and his priorities. But um, he was somebody that was ready to sacrifice for himself. So you think about the examples and, and the miracles of the process on there shared, where a companion you know is is uh, is. is seeing the process of working offers him food offers him some meal and he invites the rest of his companions says hey they're also hungry too. bring them in and the other companion who's offered the meal is now worried and it's like oh my gosh we don't have enough food the process of some says let let them let them let them eat and so he gives them uh you know lets them get served let them get served and you see just in that miracle of how so many different people are being able to be served but the process of some is the last person at that line um to be able to be serving uh, himself, uh, but but puts others before him, but recognizes that, hey, uh, I, other people have these needs too. And so you think about he was somebody that delegates would come from different countries, different empires, different uh, from different leaders and whatnot around the world and come and say, which one of you is Muhammad? So I said, which one of you is, is the prophet? And he, why would they ask that question unless you would think that you can easily recognize this person? And so you see a leader is somebody that uh, doesn't need to be uh, 
recognized by a title, doesn't need to be recognized by any type of worldly rank, but somebody who within that space is understood to be uh, a leader because of the qualities they uh, emulate. They could very easily become people who are authorities and you can see the authority level and the authority that you have. And it's important for us that as we close out here to remind ourselves that in any organization or any space that we're operating in, whether as uh, parents or whether as family members or uh, as employees or uh, even children or uh, you know students or whatever it might be, we all have the opportunities to be leaders. We might not all have the opportunities to be authorities, um, but it's important for us to differentiate leadership versus authority. Leadership is a value that each and every one of us can embody. It's part and parcel of the Uswatun Hasana, the perfect example, the good pattern of example that our Prophet has been, has left us behind. Uh, authority is 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 important to distinguish that just because we have authority doesn't mean we'll just be we're going to be good leaders. That some of us may be given authority, as the as the Quran says, as our Prophet has taught, that some of us will be given places of authority and 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 positions of authority. For those individuals, it'll be a higher responsibility to be mindful of the authority that they've been given. But for those of us who have not been given authority, we still are able to be leaders. But if we choose to live our life absent of and ignorant of this fact that we're not leaders, we're just going to be people who are following here and there, we're not living into that example the Prophet ﷺ had left behind. And the effect that leadership can have, effective good leadership can have, is not just <clears throat> one that brings worldly benefit. It's not just one that uh, brings a level of authority or a level of respect or fear. Uh, it's something that has a transformational effect within us, but also for the people around us. It cultivates a safe environment, it cultivates a healthy system and function, and it helps uh, future uh, generations, future uh, you know years that may come, future experiences for those who are around us to be even more beneficial. Because good leaders lead with that aspect that they lead in a way that uh, for for the folks who are there leading that in a mindset that those folks who are around them can achieve and do more than they could ever have, that the lead than the leader could ever have. They do it for these other aspects. And when we think about our Prophet Sallallahu he left behind uh, a tradition, a community, left behind a way, left behind a message so that his community could continue to grow, could continue to improve, but to stay connected to their roots. Um, and we think about in what ways the Prophet Sallallahu led his community led his deen, led his people around, not just in a way of a statesman, not just in the way of an imam, not just in the way of a teacher, but holistically as, as all of these different things, embodied leadership holistically in all these different facets. And in what way each of us, whoever we might be, whatever our gender might be, whatever our age might be, whatever uh, level in society we might be, whatever employment rank we have or no employment, whatever it might be, each of us has an opportunity to take from this prophetic tree a fruit of leadership and be able to uh, show it within our different spaces. But we don't do this leadership for any recognition. We don't do this leadership for any uh, type of worldly rank. We do it in the walks of the Prophet Muslim because of the example that he's left behind. So it's up to us now to think, where are we leaders and where can we be leaders? Where can we show that leadership in the space that we have uh, within our different life within our life uh because our prophet has modeled a holistic leadership of life now it's up to us to show where where do we want to uh, be that leader uh, in our life so may allah enable us to be the leaders that our prophet ibrahim salam, had prayed for us to be uh leaders of the righteous in different spaces in the home outside the home in the workplace in the school uh, in the masjid uh, in all of our communities wherever we might be May Allah enable us to be uh, individuals that recognize that leadership is inherent within us. It's a value that we can all uh, be able to aspire to and is not one that is tied intrinsically to authority. And may we recognize this uh, differentiation and may we not be a people that uh, hastens to just try and pursue authority, but hastens to try to pursue uh, leadership as exemplified by our Prophet Sallallahu and those around him. Inshallah, wa akhiru wa da'wana. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.